Uh, we're going to look at the adrenal glands or the suprarenal glands, so named because renal means kidney. These glands are found on top of the kidneys, so they are adrenal or suprarenal. And they make adrenaline um, or epinephrine, epinephrine again upon the kidney. Um, they make This is how adrenaline got its name, is what I'm trying to say. Hey, I've just been talking anatomy for three hours, so either I'm really perfectly warmed up or my brain is frazzled, but I might take this one a little bit slower than I normally do. But we're going to look at the cells of the adrenal gland under the microscope. We're going to talk about what they do. We're going to identify their layers. It's going to be pretty, okay? So the adrenal glands, they're, uh, well, they're an endocrine organ, which means they make hormones. Hormones go into the blood, and they are signals that act on other cells and tissues at a distance through the blood. Um, a cell has to have a receptor for this hormone to react to it. And the adrenal glands, are, they're one of those weird endocrine glands in which there are two groups of cells doing two very different functions, living together in the same, in the same organ. Let's have a look. Let's see what we see. Um, so the uh, the adrenal gland uh, makes adrenaline, noradrenaline. It also makes a whole bunch of uh, hormones that have effects on uh, regulating the amount of fluid and salts in the body and on metabolic rate. Uh, we're thinking courses, all that sort of thing. Um, they're going to make adrenaline and noradrenaline, but they're also going to make a whole bunch of hormones, some steroid hormones, and, oh, look at that, it's Masson's trichrome. I love Masson's trichrome. Um, so Masson's trichrome, you know, I'm a connective tissue nerd. The connective tissue stains green, you get some really nice colours there. So the cells here, uh, we can see a cortex, so the cells around the outside, that's the cortex there. And then we can see a medulla cells in the middle, and that's what I mean about two different groups of cells doing two different jobs. But in fact, in the, in the cortex, we see three layers of cells there, and those cells look quite different. We can see the green is showing us that there's, oh yes, uh, the green is showing us that there's a nice capsule around the adrenal gland, so a connective tissue surrounds, supporting it, holding it in place. There, I can see some very big cells. Those are going to be uh, neurons. That'll be a ganglion, a real-life ganglion. And actually there, we can see the cortex. We can see the outer part of the adrenal gland changes in thickness, but wherever we look, we see three layers in that cortex. So when we've looked at other endocrine organs, we see different cells that look different, they're stained differently, and it's because those cells are producing hormones, storing those hormones inside themselves, so they're producing different hormones. That's why they look differently. And then in the medulla, in the middle, uh, those cells look different. Those are the cells making adrenaline and noradrenaline. And we'll have a look at this in more detail, but the adrenal glands make adrenaline and noradrenaline, hence the name, or epinephrine or norepinephrine if you prefer. And the cells out here will make steroid hormones like cortisol, the stress hormone. And cortisol is a hormone that uh, drives metabolism, drives gluconeogenesis. It's like um, it's basically making sugar from other things that you've got stored, right? Which is crucial for life. We've got cells in here making aldosterone, and aldosterone is going to regulate the level of salts in the body by um, working with the kidney. So it's, it's part of uh, the fluid salt homeostasis of the body. So that's crucial. And then we also have cells in here making androgens, precursors to sex hormones. Although, to be honest, in the adult, where you've got normally functioning gonads, the androgens produced in the adrenal glands aren't so important. But we're talking about 
glucocorticoids such as cortisol, steroid hormones, and we're talking mineralocorticoids such as aldosterone. That's what those cells in there are making. We've also got lots of blood vessels in there, lots of capillaries, because this isn't a gland that needs a duct to secrete things externally. This is a gland that needs to put its hormones into the blood so that it acts upon other tissues of the body. Shall we have a look? Well, let's have a Let's just have a look over there, shall we? So that was my four times objective and um, 10 times to my eye, so 40 times magnification. We're now at 100 times magnification, although that will vary depending upon the size of your screen. And that's quite nice, but I think 200 times will probably be our sweet spot. Um, and look, there we go. So. We can see, incidentally, we can see a blood vessel there filled with uh, red blood cells. That's that ganglion, those great big neuron cell bodies, just a thing of beauty. So these are nerves that are innovating. The dream, I'll talk about that in a moment. So this is a, this is a ganglion, a collection of nerve cell bodies in the peripheral nervous system. We can see a little arteriole there. But all that beautiful green that you're seeing is connective tissue, that is the capsule. So as we slide in to the cortex, there are those three layers of cortex. We can see the first layer there is staining quite nicely. So these three layers of the cortex um, get named, of course, like everything. So outside here we have the zona glomerulosa, and then in the middle we have the zona fasciculata. We've got a bit of a fold here, but then that inner layer of the cortex is the zona reticularis. Um, and can you see, so this, I want to talk about words as usual, but can you see how, right, this is the cortex of the adrenal gland. Corticosteroids are being produced here. That's why they're called corticosteroids. These are steroid hormones. Steroid hormones are made with cholesterol, being made in the cortex of the adrenal gland, right? Cortisol, cortex, cortisol, that's why it's called cortisol. Um, we were looking at the pituitary gland and we were talking about adrenocorticotrophic hormone. The pituitary gland sends that hormone down to the cortex and that stimulates the cortex of the adrenal gland to produce and release steroid hormones, adrenocorticotrophic hormone. See, naming's important. It makes everything so much easier to remember and understand, remember reliably. Um, so out in the layer of the cortex closest to the capsule, the outermost layer, the zona glomerulosa, um, these cells are making mineralocorticoids, they're making aldosterone. These are the cells that are taking part in regulating the fluid salt balance within the body, um, that, that homeostatic function. If we slide in a little bit, so the, the next deep layer, the, the zona fasciculata that we're looking at there, it looks very fatty. And like I say, these steroid hormones are made with cholesterol. So yeah, it looks very fatty. These are the cells that are making cortisol. They're making the glucocorticoids. They're making the stress hormone that is driving your motivation to revise for anatomy exams and histology exams, right? And we can see a little bit of green here. So we can see a little bit of green staining in between the cells. So that's the connective tissue, the supportive connective tissue that's supporting all of this. And if we were to look carefully, we'd see little gaps that would be the capillaries that are within here, right? And then if we slide to, see if I can find a, a less wobbly bit. Um, there we go. <laughs> it's still a bit wobbly. Uh, the deep layer then, the innermost layer of the cortex, the zona reticularis, these cells are making androgens. So precursors to the sex hormones. Um, so let me just slide up. <clears throat> to, there we go. If we go to the top. There's not quite so much stain here, but there we go. <clears throat> zona glomerulosa, zona fasciculata, zona reticularis. Oh, that's got a bit of a fold in it as well. And then if I keep sliding in, these cells look a little bit different. Now these guys, these are really special. 
I think my students know I love these cells. <laughs> so uh, these, these cells are cool because they are a modified part of the sympathetic nervous system. So the neurotransmitters of the sympathetic nervous system that they get released onto the target structures are noradrenaline. Um, and these cells, these modified sympathetic neurons, these are called chromaffin cells. And um, they make adrenaline, they make noradrenaline, they store it up. And then when you get that fight or flight response, bam, these, they release that adrenaline and noradrenaline into the blood, goes around the body, hits those adrenergic receptors, gets you, gives you that fight or flight response. So I guess I like these so much because, of course, being a rock climber and adrenaline junkie, I'm always looking for that, that feeling, which is so much harder to get when you get older and you do things. Anyway, let's zoom in a little bit. Um, this is 400 times magnification. So these maybe unremarkable looking cells are called chromaffin cells. Affin, they have an affinity for chromatic dyes. That's all that means. And there are chromaffin cells around the body, but these are the chromaffin cells of the medulla of the adrenal gland. And look, we can see a little capillary sneaking in there. Um, these cells are connected still to the, um, the sympathetic nervous system. So they're connected to the sympathetic nerves that come out of the spinal cord. So they will be triggered by sympathetic neurons to release adrenaline and noradrenaline, which will go into the blood and then switch on everything to supercharge you, right? Um, so yeah, big fan. These, if you want a bit of embryology, so these cells, these chromaffin cells, come from neural crest cells, uh, which are from neurectoderm, um, just like the sympathetic neurons. Whereas these cells out here in the medulla these come from, sorry, these cells out here in the cortex, these cells come from the mesoderm in the embryo. But that's it, that's your, that's your uh, adrenal gland. Um, more organs that are absolutely vital for life. You cannot live without your adrenal glands. You need the hormones being produced by these cells. Um, and if your adrenal glands have been removed, you need to put that back somehow. So uh, there's the cortex, those three layers producing steroid hormones. There's the medulla producing the adrenaline and the noradrenaline. Um, yeah, I, I just very cool. I just, yeah, I just really like. Well, I just really like my job, don't I? Cool. All right. Adrenal gland done. Um, the classic bit of uh, histology, um, and I really like that if you understand those terms, all that physiology makes a bit more sense and a lot, it's a lot easier to remember. It's a lot easier for me anyway. And I also like the fact that we can look at these cells and we can stain these cells and we can see that they look different, which shows us that they're doing different things, they're making different hormones. Anyway, right, that didn't really give me much of an adrenaline rush, but it was fun. See you next week.